Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to install and set up Feedsy to add RSS feeds and posts to your WordPress website. First, we need to install Feedsy, so go over to the left, hover over Plugins and click on Add New. Once the page opens in the search box, type in Feedsy. Okay, so let's install the first result. Once it's done installing, click on the Activate button. Okay, so now that we have installed Feedsy, we need to start configuring our feed sources. So let's go over to the left and click on Feed Categories. At the top, click on Add Category. I'm going to name my category WordPress. Okay, so we need to add our sources below this under Category Feeds. And this is where you'd add your feed URL. I'm going to use the Themile blog as my feed source. So I'm going to go to the Themile website and go to Blog. So let's copy the URL at the top and go back to our category settings and paste it in this field. Now let's add slash feed at the end of this URL since this is a WordPress blog. If you want to add multiple feeds, separate them with a comma and a space. To show you how this works, I'm going to go to the code in WP blog. So let's copy the URL, command or control C and go back to categories and paste it in this field. Type slash feed at the end also. And you always want to make sure that you're using a valid URL. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to copy the URL and I'm going to go to this website. I will leave a link to this in the description. Let's paste it in this field and click on check. Okay, so this is a valid feed. Okay, so let's go ahead and publish our category. All right, so now we want to add our feed to a page. Let's hover over pages on the left and click on add new. Now you want to give your page a meaningful title. I'm going to call mine WordPress feed. After all, my source is WordPress related. Okay. So at the bottom, click on the plus icon to add a new block and in the search box, type in feedsy. All right. So click on the only result. So we have a field over here where we can add our feed and we can either paste in a URL like this, or we can access the drop down to select the category that we just created. Remember, we named our category WordPress. This is actually the slug for that category. So I'm going to open the dashboard in a new tab and I'm going to navigate to feed categories under the feeds menu, just to show you where you can find this slug. So it's right here. Okay, so if you had multiple categories, you would be able to select between them using this drop down menu. So let's go ahead and click on this load feed button. All right, so here are the feeds from both of our sources. And we have our feeds in the center of our page. And on the right, we have customization options that are grouped using tabs. The first option is feed settings. And you can change the number of items being displayed by moving this slider. So I can change this from 5 to 11. And if you look at the feeds, we now have 11 items being displayed. And if I change the number to 2, we now only have 2 items being displayed. Okay, so I'm going to make this eight. We also have the option to hide the first N items. So for example, if I want to hide the first two items, all I need to do is type in two in this field. And you'll notice that the first two items are no longer available. And if you don't want to ignore any items, make sure you set this value to zero. Okay, so now we also have a lazy load option, which is only available on the front end. Next, we have feed caching time with options that range from one hour all the way to 15 days. And you can sort your feeds by selecting from one of these options. Now, under items options, we can choose to open links in a new tab, or we can click on this menu and select same tab. You can add a number to this field to limit the characters in your title. Setting a value of zero will remove the title. Adding no value will leave the full title. You can also control the meta fields that you want to display. So for example, if I want to show the author, I could type in author in this field like this. And if I want to add the date, I could add a comma, leave a space and type date. So now the date is now displayed next to the author. You can add additional meta field values, but I encourage you to use the link at the bottom to find more information on available meta fields. And you can also toggle this next option on or off to display or hide post descriptions like this. Okay, so the next option is a description character limit. You can use this option to control the number of characters from the description that gets displayed. So I'm gonna limit the characters to 20 as an example. Okay, here's zero and here's 50. So if you want the full description to be shown, you can either leave the value as zero or you can leave it empty as well. 
Now let's move to item image options. We have the option to display a fallback image by default it's set to yes without a fallback image. But we can also select yes with a fallback image and we will have an option to upload an image. If you want you can also select no and then an image will not be displayed. So I'm going to change this back to yes with a fallback image. You can use the next option to make changes to the size of your thumbnail. By default it's set to 150 but you can either increase or decrease this value to get the size that you're looking for. Also notice how the text wraps around the thumbnail according to the size selected. And the next option is related to HTTP images. And you have three options that you can choose from. I'm going to leave it as the first one. Next, we have an advanced option that allows us to have additional CSS classes. But I'm going to leave this alone for now. And once you're done, click on the preview link at the top of the page. Now click on preview in a new tab. Okay, so this is my feed, but yours might look different depending on the theme that you're using. I'm using the Neve theme, which I will leave a link to in the description. So once you're done, click on the publish button twice. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate the short codes method and we are going to be using the Elementor page builder. You would need to have Elementor installed to follow along. So hover over pages and click on add new. So again, we need to add a meaningful title. So I'm going to call this Feedsy short code. Okay, now click on the edit with Elementor button. So just wait for the page to load. Okay, so let's click on this red button to select a structure and I'm going to use the last one. So now I'm going to click on this widgets icon. I'm going to type in shortcode in the search box and drag the shortcode widget to this column in the center. All right. So now I'm going to type the base FeedZ shortcode, which is FeedZ RSS between two square brackets. And as you can see, this does not do anything as yet. So we need to add to it. So inside of the bracket, after the last S in RSS, I'm going to type feeds, which is F E E D S, then the equal sign and a quote symbol. As an example, I'm going to paste in my feed URL, which is the blog with feed at the end and one more quote symbol. All right. So here's the feed. And this is how you can display a feed using the URL. But remember, we set up categories in the beginning. So I'm going to highlight this feed URL to remove it. OK, and let's keep the last quote. Now let's type in the slug for the category that we added, which is WordPress. OK, so here we have our feed again. So we have the title, description and metadata being displayed, but we don't have the thumbnails. But I'll be able to see it if I go ahead and click preview changes at the bottom. So here's the feed with the thumbnails. So to show the thumbnails in the editor, I'm going to go back and click on the apply button. OK, so now we have visible thumbnails. You can also use shortcode parameters to customize the display options for this feed. So let's go over to the Feedsy documentation to see some examples. In the first example, a basic shortcode was used using a feed URL. And in the second example, we have some additional parameters that were used. For example, the maximum number of feeds was limited to two. So if we take a look at the example at the bottom, we'll see only two feeds. And here's that max parameter within the shortcode. So we can actually use this on our own feed. Let's go back to Elementor to give it a try. OK, so here we have our feed with eight items and we just want to limit this to two. So I'm going to type in a space and then max equals quote two quotes. OK, so now the number of items decreased to two. And you can always change this number according to your own specifications. So feel free to play around with these parameters to customize your feed. And at the bottom of this page, you'll find a full list of available parameters. I will leave a link to this page in the description as well. Now I'm going to demonstrate adding multiple parameters to your shortcode. So let's go ahead and hide the thumbnails using the shortcode. So I'm going to go back to Elementor. And after the last quote, I'm going to leave a space and type thumb equals quote, no, then one more quote. So now our thumbnails have vanished. To get it back, type in yes within the quotes or simply remove the entire thumbnail parameter. If you want to see what your page would look like, simply click on the preview changes icon at the bottom of the page next to publish. And if you're happy with the way it looks, go back to the editor and click on the publish button at the bottom of the page. All right. So that's how you add feeds to a page using shortcodes. OK, so I'm going to show you how to import posts using Feedsy. Go over to the Feedsy menu item on the left and click on import posts. 
All right, so let's go ahead and click on new import. Now let's add a title to our import. I'm going to call this WordPress feed import import. Okay. So at the bottom, there is a field where we could add a source. So we could either use a URL like this, or we can use a category. So let's go ahead and click on the use feed category button to select one. So here's our category slug. So these first few options require the pro version of Feedsy, which has a lot more customization options. And I'll leave a link to Feedsy Pro in the description. Now let's go ahead and change the number of feed items we want to import from the source from 10 to about eight. The next option requires the pro version. So I'm going to skip this and I'm not going to turn off remove duplicates. We're going to leave this on. So let's scroll down to the next section. This is where you can customize post related options. You can use this drop down to select a post type, but I'm going to leave this as post. I'm not going to change it. You can also configure post taxonomy as well as post status. So you can choose to save your posts as a draft before publishing. And I'm not going to change this either. So you can always go through each of these options to configure their settings based on your needs. Once you're done, click on the red save button at the bottom of this page. And this should take us back to the dashboard. Now to complete the import, we need to toggle this switch on. Okay, so now we need to reload this page. You can either press Ctrl or Command R or click on this icon. Okay, so now the next step is to click on the Run Now button. Okay, so now we need to reload this page one more time. So let's go ahead. Okay, so we have successfully imported eight posts and we have a positive status. So now basically we are done with this page. So we just need to go over to the menu on the left and click on the posts link. All right. So here are the posts and I'm going to click on one of these posts. Let's go to the first one. So this is what it looks like in the editor. I'm going to click on the preview link to view it. So here it is. So now you know how to use Feedsy to add RSS feeds and posts to your WordPress website. Thank you for watching.